Hey up everyone. Uh, right, so another video about COVID-19 and the um, situation here in Britain. So so worldwide, things are, things are still pretty dire. Um, it's been going on for a year now, right? This entire pandemic. We've had over 2 million people have died from it. Um, tens of millions of people are infected. Um, in Britain, we've just had 100,000 people died. Um, <clears throat> and the response to, to, to COVID-19 and what to do about it, there's been quite a bit of um, conflict within, within the scientific community about what to do. So we had like the Barrington Declaration, which basically said you should let everybody get infected and get herd immunity and stuff and only protect the most vulnerable. Um, and then we've had the going to lockdown, shut everything down, make everybody stay at home. And it seems like that the going to lockdown, send everybody home and keep them at home is the preferred option of most of the politicians and stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot of disingenuous, like, people taking part in this conversation. So you've got people saying things about the, the Barrington Declaration that are just not true, that it would kill more people and stuff like that. Um, you see, the thing is that, like, if we just let everybody get infected, right, there's a certain number of people who will get infected. But that number doesn't change. Even if you say don't, the same number of people will get infected. The difference is, when do they get infected, right? So if you do like a Barrington Declaration or you go for a herd immunity, everybody gets infected straight away together, right, yeah? If you do this lockdown thing, they get infected, but it spreads it out over a long period of time, yeah? But you still end up with the same number of people infected. It doesn't matter which way you go, right? So the reason why governments have chosen the lockdown route is that they don't want to overwhelm their... National Health Service, because if everybody gets infected together, everybody's going to go to hospital and the uh, hospitals are not going to be able to deal with that amount of people all at once, right? So, so they're spreading it out and slowing it down so that people get infected over a longer period of time so that the health service can deal with it. That's basically the thinking behind why everybody's going for this lockdown thing. The problem is that this is like the third lockdown that we've had in Britain, right, yeah? This is the second one that's been complete and absolute, you know. So, like, right now, nothing is up. There is no economy in this country. There's nothing happening. It, all companies are shut down. The only things that are kept open are what's called essential work, essential stuff. So, you've got food. You can go to the supermarket. Supermarket Road's still open. Everything else is shut. All the pubs are shut. All the cafes are shut. All the restaurants are shut. Cinemas, ice rinks. Everything's shut. There's nothing open. Nothing, right? Um, I've got a clock that's broken. I'm trying to get a clocksmith, but there's no clocksmiths because there's no because that's not essential work. Do you know what I mean? So anything that's not essential work's not it's not happening, right? And everybody's been told to stay at home. So everybody's staying at home, right? The thing is that like when you've got this like complete ban where you just have to stay at home and you're not allowed outside and you're not allowed to meet people and you're not and, and it's complete shutdown that works better because people understand it right and they know what they're supposed to do so we did that at the at the beginning yeah and then in the middle we had this kind of hybrid mess around thing where you had no idea what the hell you were supposed to be doing and what you weren't they kept changing their ideas every day we had these like daily briefings and every day the briefings would change and so the rules changed and so people were getting arrested for things because they didn't have a clue that the rules had changed since yesterday. Do you know what I mean? It was just, it was a complete and utter nightmare. They had this tiered system. It just didn't work at all, right? And people were just got to the point of just going like, well, fuck you, right? I have no idea what you want me to do, what you don't want me to do. So I'm just going to do whatever I want, right? Yeah. And then, then we ended up with massive spikes and, and a massive reinfection rate, right? So, like, this third time, it's gone back to everything shutting down, go home, stay at home, don't meet anybody, don't have anybody in your house, don't go to other people's houses, don't meet in public. Simple. 
Everybody understands what they're supposed to do. <clears throat> the problem that we've got right now is that when we did this in, in, back in March, it had a massive effect on the virus. So we had infection rates going up, right? Then we went into lockdown and then the infection rates went down. And the, what's called the R rate, which is called the replication rate, which is like, if I catch COVID, how many people do I pass it on to? Yeah, that changes, right? So sometimes, so back back in May, in March, before we went into lockdown, the R rate was like about three. So if I caught it, I passed it on to three other people. Yeah. But then we got the R rate down to below one. And that's the, that's, the, that's the number, that's the important number, R rate of one. Anything below that means that the virus is dying off and there's less of it and there's less people getting infected. Anything above one means more people are getting infected. So, so it's quite worrying, right? So basically, we shut everything down and, it, and the R rate fell and, and the infection rates fell and people dying fell and we seemed like we were kind of beating it, yeah? Then the government, in its wisdom, decided to send everybody back to work. And you're like, that's madness. If you send everybody back to work, everybody's going to get infected, right? Because you're throwing everybody together in social settings with, with people who are not part of their family, right? That's, that's, how it gets in, that's how you get infected, right? But anyhow, government decided to send everybody back to work, send all kids back to school. And then the infection rate just went through the fucking roof, right? And then it just got to a point where it was just ridiculous amount of people that were dying from this thing. So then they had to decide, right, we're going to have to, have to do a U-turn on this and get everybody back so, and stop people going to work and stop people going to school. So what sort of schools shut down, universities shut down, um, everybody got sent back home and got told to stay at home. People were told not to go to work. They had this scheme where they were paying 80% of people's wages to people to keep them at home. That was coming to an end, but anyhow, we've decided to extend that, so now people are still getting paid to stay at home. The problem is that right now, it's not having the same effect that it was having before, right? The reason is, we're in a different place with this virus now, right? So, originally, we had the virus, right? And that was it. It had a genetic code that we could analyze and go, yeah, that's the COVID-19 virus, right? That was it, right? The problem that we've got right now is that we're entering what's called a second wave, right? So what a second wave is, is that viruses are very simple organisms, very simple life forms. And they also breed very quickly, right? Do you know what I mean? You end up with like generations and generations and generations of it within a very short period of time because it's constantly breeding, it's constantly mating and stuff with other viruses, right? And it has a massive replication rate, right? Anything that, that breeds like that is going to create mutations, right? Because you've got the gen you've got the genetic material that's being copied. When you when you make another person or another, I mean another virus. You copy the, gen the genetic code, the DNA, you copy it into the new thing, yeah? And this is billions and billions of lines long of genetic code, right? And mistakes get made. So when they're copying it, they make mistakes in it. That's a mutation, right? Now, sometimes mutations have no effect whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't do anything. But sometimes they have massive dramatic effects. So, like... One of the like pandemics that we've dealt with before in history, the Spanish flu, which was in 1918, that had a second wave where the mutation in the virus made it massively more deadly and it killed a hell of a lot more people than it did in the first wave, right? Which is unusual because usually it's the other way around. Usually it's the first wave that's the most deadly because humans have not come into contact with this biological thing before. So they've got no immunity. So it kills loads of people. By the time it comes to the second wave, you've got people who've been infected and who are now immune. So there's less people for it to infect. So it doesn't spread as much. So it doesn't kill as many people. That's usually what happens in the lifetime of a virus. Yeah, usually you get this devastating first wave and then the second wave is less and the third wave is less than that. Sometimes that's not what happens. Spanish flu, it was the opposite. The first wave was nothing. It didn't kill anybody. Everybody was fine. Then you got his second wave, which was devastating. It killed hundreds of millions of people. And it seems that, like, 
we're entering this second wave now. So we're getting lots of um, lots of different um, variations that are taking place within the virus. So we're getting these different strains now, and we've got distinctive strains that are separate. So rather than the virus, we've now got loads of little different viruses that are linked and they're a similar sort of thing, but they're different, right? And we're getting mutations that are taking place. And these mutations are having an effect on the efficiency of this virus, right? So we've got what's called the B117 uh, variation uh, strain that was found in Britain, right? It's funny because there's, there's loads of strains that are being found in Britain for some reason. And also in California, we're getting quite a few strains over there. It's weird. Why is it in Britain where it's, where it's just mutating massively? I don't know why that is the case, but it, it is, right? We've got like at least four different strains in Britain now, right? This B117 is was the first, one of the first ones. So we, we got a variation that came from South Africa and we got this variation that came from Britain. It's sometimes called the Kent variant. Um, and this virus, right, is basically, it means that more people are getting infected, right? So this, this variation, this mutation, allows the virus to infect more people. So before, where the R number might be one, when this, when this virus is around, it's much more than one, right? So this is what's happening, right? We've gone into massive lockdown, but it's having no effect because we've got these variations of the disease that are infecting a hell of a lot more people than what they were before, right? So we've got more people getting infected and this lockdown is having zero effect on that at all, right? So the R number's not changed at all, even though we're in, we've been in lockdown for months. Nothing's changed, it's not happening. So it seems like the tool bag that we've got to fight this thing's not working anymore, right? Do you know what I mean? Putting us into lockdowns, not having any effect. People who are getting infected are infecting loads and loads of other people, right? So this is a worrying trend because what this means is that, like, because this, because this variation is infecting more people, it's becoming dominant, right? The, the, right. So where, we, so where we had the virus and then we had this little tiny variation that was infecting just a few people, this tiny thing has blown up massively because it's infecting loads of people. And we get into a situation where there's more people with this variation than with the original, right? So but that's the situation that we're getting into. In Britain, it's like 80% of infections are, are, of this, are of this B117 variation, right? So it's now becoming the dominant strain, which means that this is the virus that we're having to fight, not the old virus, do you know what I mean? So that's quite worrying because this means we are entering a second stage. But the thing is that like, we're, seeing these, we're seeing these mutations, but we're seeing lots and lots of different mutations now. So one of the worrying things is there's, there's a variation that comes from San Antonio in Texas, right? Why this is worrying is that this mutation means that the vaccines that we've got have no effect on it, right? So it's basically bypassing the vaccines. Because the vaccines were the great hope for us, right? We've only recently got the vaccines and we're now starting to vaccinate people against this to provide them with immunity, right? So in Britain, um, we've like vaccinated like nearly 15 million people in this country, right? Nearly all the over 70s have all, have all been vaccinated. And the same sort of thing's going on around, around the world. The Britain's been one of the best really, in terms of the amount of people that they've managed to vaccinate. We've vaccinated more than anywhere. I think, I think, I forget now. I think there's one other country that's vaccinated more than us. We're like second best or something like that. But whatever, like, the thing is that, like, we were like, fantastic, we've got a vaccine and vaccinate everybody and everybody's going to be fine. And we thought that was amazing. But now there's this, there's this fucking variation, this mutation that's happened in San Antonio where it's bypassing the virus, right? Right, but not only that. So we've got that in San Antonio, where that this little mutation is like bypassing the virus and it still infects you, even if you're immune, right? Even if you've got an immune response, it bypasses it. And we've also got another one in Britain, in Bristol. It's called the Bristol variation, right? So, so the Bristol variant also bypasses the virus, the vaccine. So it might be the case that vaccines don't do anything. Do you know what I mean? They're pretty pointless. You mean, you've got this like Bristol variation that bypasses the virus. What if that then merges 
with the B117, which infects more people, then you've got something serious here. You've got something that's going to infect everybody and it's also going to bypass the virus. Because what we've seen is that these variations are mixing and mingling together. We've just found the first um, hybrid that's come basically. So with the virus, then we've got variations with mutations. We've got two variations with mutations, which have then combined together to become a, a hybrid. Yeah. Now, the thing is that that this, this variation kills more people, right? This is the thing that we were worrying about. In all of my videos before, I've been going on about the second wave because I've been an advocate of herd immunity because when the second wave comes, if it's more deadly, we need more as many people as possible who have got immunity to this else it's going to wipe out millions of us. Do you know what I mean? But this is what we're starting to see now is that this virus is mutating in such a way that's making it much more dangerous to us. It's killing more people. It's infecting more people. It's bypassing the virus. This is turning it into a much, much more difficult beast for us to fight. Do you know what I mean? But this is where we are right now. So we've got, um, We've got this mutation, which is now 30 to 70% more deadly. 70% more deadly, that's that's horrific, right? That's nearly twice as many people it's going to kill. right? But this is where we are with it now. This is where we are. Um, this virus is turning into something completely fucking different from what it was before. And we're seeing massive amounts of variants in... in there's about four different variants that are in Britain. There's six different variations in the United States. Like, we haven't got figures for these things in, in lots of other countries, like India and stuff. These things are not even being monitored because they haven't got enough scientists to do this sort of shit. But in Britain and America, we've been monitoring this stuff. So we can see what's going on. And we, we're finding these new variations. And now, now, they're, ming now they're mingling into hybrids that are, like, taking taking the, the qualities of each one and combining them together into this much more deadly fucking thing that we've got to deal with here, right? So this is a worrying situation that we're in. Do you know what I mean? Right? We're in a really, really, really precarious position with this fucking virus. We might not, we might not be able to get rid of it, you know. We might have to deal with this. We might have to, every year, have us flu jabs and have us COVID-19 jabs as well. And that's only if the vaccine fucking works. Do you know what I mean? The vaccines are working right now, but like I said, there's variations that are, that are bypassing the vi vaccines and are still infecting people. There's two people who'd been immunised, that had two shots, so they should have had full immunity and they got infected again, right? Even though they're supposed to be immune because these variations are bypassing the vaccine. So this is, this is, this is proper fucking worrying. This is proper worrying. The other thing that's worrying that's going on is that it just fucking blows my mind, this, right? But... Anti-vaxxers, people who are against vaccines, are having an impact here, right? So, in Britain, there's 1% of the population who are refusing to have vaccines. 1%. Do you know what I mean? This, that, that's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who are refusing to, 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 get, to get vaccines, right? This means you're putting everybody at risk here, right? Because we need to reach a level of immunization well for most viruses it's usually about 70 percent if you get 70 percent of the population vaccinated you basically eradicate the virus right but with coronavirus it's much more than that you need about 85 or to nearly 95 percent of people vaccinated to get herd immunity to wipe it out right if you've got groups of people who are refusing to get vaccinated right that means you're never going to reach that level of herd immunity which means the whole fucking point of vaccines is being undermined by these people, right? It's being undermined, and we're never really going to reach that level. So in Hong Kong, there's only a 40% uptake, right? That means 60% of people are not taking the vaccine, right? This is, this is ridiculously irresponsible of these people, right? You're proper putting people's lives at risk here, right? For your own selfishness. Go get a fucking vaccine, you fucking idiots. But they're not. And this is this is what's happening. So now, so now we're getting loads of people who are not getting vaccinated. Um, it's just mind-boggling. But this is all from anti-vaxxers who who are having influences on people. Do you know what I mean? 
It's like there's loads of demonstrations against like lockdown and against a lot of the stuff, which you'd think traditionally the left would be involved if the government is imposing some kind of bullshit on people the people who would be resisting that would be the left the anarchists and stuff would be like fuck the government do you know what i mean but what you're actually seeing is it's the right wing who are doing who are who are who are holding demonstrations and stuff against lockdown bizarrely but within this milieu of right wing knobheads that's where the anti-vaxxers are yeah they're part of them lot yeah I mean, I wouldn't say that anti-vaxxing is right or left-wing, but it's certainly more right-wing people who are involved in the anti-vax movement than left-wing people that are, do you know what I mean? I don't know any leftists who are anti-vaxxing. Oh, I know quite a few right-wingers, oh, well, I don't know them, but I've seen them online and stuff, who are right-wingers who are anti-vaxxers. I've never met a single left-wing person who's anti-vaxxing. But, but whatever, right, I don't think that it's, it is particularly left or right-wing that you could define it as an ideology, do you know what I mean? But, but whatever... These people are like mixing with them, but they're obviously having an effect. If you're getting one percent of the population to refuse vaccines, if you're getting sixty percent of people in Hong Kong not taking vaccines, that's a massive impact that you're having here, right? Do you know what I mean? It's fucking scary because these people are going to get people killed. Do you know what I mean? This, that is what's going to happen if you stop people getting vaccinated. People are going to die. That's as simple as that, right? Like for instance, myself, like. Like, I've got an illness, right, and it's an autoimmune illness, right, and I'm worried about taking the vaccine because if you start bumping up my immune system, I'm going to have, a, my body's going to have a reaction to that, do you know what I mean? Because it's my immune system that causes me all the pain and, all, all, and, and, and like, you know, all the, my life's pretty devastating with this illness, right, and it's all caused by my, my immune system, it's like my immune system's attacking my body, do you know what I mean? If you start bumping up my immune system, it's going to have a devastating effect on me, right? So I'm a bit umming and ahhing about whether to have the vaccine myself. What I'm thinking is it might be better for me personally if I don't have the vaccine and I rely on herd immunity, right? Yeah. So I re rely on you lot to keep me safe, right? I rely on you lot getting vaccinated to, to protect me, yeah? That's what I'm de relying on here because me taking the vaccine might have a devastating effect upon my health and I'm quite worried about that. So I'm thinking that it's probably better for me to not have the vaccine and to rely on herd immunity. Yeah, and if you've got knobheads like these anti-vaxxers getting people to not get vaccinated, you're putting me at risk. You are putting my life at risk here. Do you know what I mean? These fucking cunts, man. But that's where we are. That's where we are with it. We're starting to have human trials. So there are people now that are voluntarily getting infected with COVID-19 so that we can study what, what goes on in the body, right? Um, I applied to do it, but I'm too old. <laughs> I'm getting to a point now where I can't even go into medical trials because I'm too old. But whatever, but people have volunteered and people are now voluntarily getting infected with the disease. So this is this is a good this is a good thing because this will, this is gonna allow us to have a proper focused analysis of exactly how this fucking thing affects the body, do you know what I mean? We're gonna be in control of when it infects you and how it how it affects your body and stuff. So this is this can only be a good thing, right? And hats off to the people who are doing this. You're the fucking heroes, do you know what I mean, man? You're putting your life at risk for everybody else. I've got nothing but respect for you guys. Oh, but that's happening. It's happening in Britain, right? I, I don't think it's happening anywhere else. Um, but there's open three studies, I think, three human trial studies have opened in Britain. So so, so that's pretty cool. Um, and hopefully we're going to get a lot of information from this. Um, the other thing is, this is a bit of a... This is a bit of a weird one, really, right? So, so obviously, around the, the whole pandemic, there's a shitload of conspiracy theories and stuff that have been doing the rounds, yeah? And one of the, one of the conspiracy theories is that, that basically this virus is, like, man-made. Yeah, it was made in a fucking laboratory and some kind of mad scientist laying out or something, or it just escaped out of it, right? And to be fair, most of us just go, yeah, that sounds like nonsense. It's probably not. But the thing that's like it's a bit weird is like the World Health Organization, right, is, is trying to find out where this virus came from, right? So they've been over in Wuhan. And in their latest release that they said, they said that they're not ruling out the possibility 
that this virus started in the in a Wuhan lab in the laboratory because they've got a virology department in Wuhan, right? It's like quite a big place. So if if there was a virus that escapes, that's kind of the sort of place where it would come from, right? Well, the World Health Organization have said they're not ruling out that it might have come from a lab in Wuhan, right? That's, that, what the fuck, right? That's like a massive conspiracy theory being backed up by the World Health Organization. But if that's true, man, then that's, that's fucking... Well, it's not going to do well for China's image around the world if it came from a lab. Do you know what I mean? But most of the other science that I've seen says that it's not man-made, that it's just naturally occurring, that there's certain characteristics of it that prove that it came from, like, bats and stuff. So I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but it's a bit, it's a bit strange that, that they would even, that they're even entertaining that as an explanation as to what happened and where it came from, and they're not ruling it out. So, so that's it. Right. So, so the other things to talk about really about this is um, the social aspects in Britain really. So basically, I'd say, I'd say most people are following the lockdown, right, you know, like you're only allowed out of the house for certain things, um, to go to work, although everybody's being told to stay at home. But, like, if you're, like, a cleaner or something, you're allowed to go out and do a cleaning or, or whatever, yeah. Um, to to deal with medical th things, do you know? Uh, to go get medicines and to, to, if somebody's, like, I don't know, if somebody's having a medical emergency that you need to go to, you can do that. But also, the other thing is exercise. So, that's basically what I've been going out of the house for, right? We've got a supermarket up the road. I go to the supermarket. You're allowed to go shopping for food, right? So I go, to sh I go shopping. Um, and then we've got like some beautiful park areas around here and like nature reserves around where I live. So I go for a walk around there, right? And like if I get stopped by cops, I'll just say I'm out exercising, which is what I'm doing anyhow, do you know what I mean? So I'm allowed to go out for that. But like the thing is that there's like a park as well that I go through. Um, the thing is that, like, there are there are definitely people who are not following the rules, right? So, like, when you go into the park, there are groups of people sat around, do you know what I mean? Having picnics and stuff. Or even playing football. You go into the park, there's, like, 20 kids playing football, do you know what I mean? You're not supposed to do that. It might be exercise, but you're not allowed to exercise with other people. You've got to exercise on your own. So you're not allowed to play fucking football, do you know what I mean? But there are kids out there playing football. And there are lots of people around, just hanging around. And lots of people just sat around talking and stuff. Do you know what I mean? So it's pretty clear that not everybody's sticking to this lockdown thing. And that's, that's borne out everywhere, right, as well. So there's loads of fucking examples of, like, illegal raves being put on. Do you know what I mean? And, like, if you do this sort of stuff, if you have a party or something and loads of people turn up, they fine you £10,000. What the fuck? Ten thousand pounds, whatever. Who's got ten thousand pounds? Do you know what I mean for a fine? And every day we're hearing stories about these fines being given to people, and there's illegal raids happening out in the woods and stuff. But there's also people having parties and stuff in their houses, big barbecues and stuff. Every single day there are reports of people being arrested, <clears throat> people being fined, parties being broken up. Raves being broken up, riots happening, there's riots and shit happening in the streets. There's the I mentioned earlier about the demonstrations and stuff that people that are happening uh, against lockdown. These are growing, these are getting bigger and bigger, right? Initially, when they started off, a couple of hundred people. You're now getting tens of thousands of people going out into London to demonstrate against the lockdown, right? So, so it's having a massive effect socially, do you know what I mean? It's having, it has having a massive effect socially. It's having a lot of effect on, like, mental health problems, domestic violence is going through the fucking roof because everybody's crammed into their fucking houses and not allowed to live and there's, like, a fucking pressure cooker of emotions and stuff, do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not good, do you know what I mean? Humans are not supposed to be crammed in together and not allowed to go out, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not a normal environment for us to live in and it's like bringing out the worst in us, do you know what I mean? Domestic violence has gone up by 250%, man, that's crazy, that's fucking horrific. Mental health charities, do you know what I mean? It's just, 
It's just horrific. The whole thing's just like, you know, you just think of it as a simple, oh, everybody's just being asked to stay at home. But you've just got to think of how that's affecting people mentally. Do you know what I mean? Being stuck in, in four walls and not allowed to go out. You're going to get fucking stir crazy, aren't you? Do you know what I mean? It's like... I have to keep going out for walks because it just drives me nuts being in house all the time, right? Do you know what I mean? Like, I live over the road from a pub. I used to go spend a lot of time in the pub, drinking, playing pool, meeting people. You can't do that, do you know what I mean? You can't go out. You never meet anybody. I, met, I had a face-to-face -face conversation with anybody for over a month. Do you know what I mean? That's what it's like. Like, how is that social... How is that a society? When I'm not even having, allowed to have a conversation with anybody. Do you know what I mean? Like, I haven't met anybody face-to-face -face for ages because I live on my own. Do you know what I mean? And, like... My family and stuff, and my friends and stuff, who I would usually meet, I can't, I'm not allowed to meet them. Do you know what I mean? I'm not allowed to see them, so I've got to stay at home and be on my own all the time. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's not how humans are supposed to live. Do you know what I mean? It has a horrific effect on you. Do you mean I need to go out just to see other people, just to be made aware that there's more people on this planet than me? Do you know what I mean? It's like solipsism. I think I'm the only person alive. Do you know what I mean? This is what it's like. It's it's not. It's it's having a massive ma massive effect on everybody. Do you know? It is, and and people are just just sick of it, really. Do you know what I mean? We've been like this for months now. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've had to leave university because it's just not working, trying to do it all online and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? I know loads of people have left college and left university because, you, do you know what I mean? We didn't sign up for courses to be run online. And, and the, the online experience in education is horrific, it's awful. It's like, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not putting, putting myself through that. I'll wait until I can go back into lessons and I can go back to a class with a lecturer in front of me who's going to talk to me rather than being on a fucking computer screen. It's awful. I hated it and I had to leave and lots of other people have left as well. Do you know what I mean? There's loads of people dropping out of education. That's another statistic that's coming out. Um... There's lots of other things. There's lots of, like, students being charged for fucking rental for accommodation that they're not even using because they've had to go home, but they're still having to pay rent on places that they're not even living in. Do you know what I mean? There's all kinds of shit like that going on. Um, we luckily avoided the homeless crisis that seemed to be looming because we had this policy of zero evictions that, that the landlords were not allowed to evict people. And that came to an end. And basically we had two months, well we had, no, we had like just over a month where they were allowed to evict people, yeah. And evictions went through the roof, homelessness went through the roof, and then the government had a U-turn and said, no, you can't evict anybody. So we're in a situation now where they're not allowed to evict anybody again. But we have a massive homeless, homelessness problem that's going on here as well. Um, I mean, I went into town, right? It's not something I usually have to do, but I had to go whatever, it's good to council. I went into town and the homelessness is just horrific, man. There's just tens of people living on streets in the middle of town. And the town's empty, right? There's no, nobody there because no, no, none of the shops are open. Do you know, everything's shut down. So there's no reason to, what's the point of going into town? There's nothing there. You know what I mean? You can't even go to a cafe or anything, so everything's shut. So there's nobody in town. The only people who are in town are the homeless and there are just, just, I've, I've never seen so many homeless people, it's ridiculous. So this whole thing, this whole lockdown stuff is just having massive, fucking massive ramifications for people's lives. It's just, it's just like ripping society up, do you know what I mean? Economically, there's nothing happening, nothing happening. You look at like economic statistics, that's <laughs> devastating, you just go, how is an economy supposed to function like this? It's like, it's hemorrhaging money like... Do you know what I mean? Debt. We've got just mounting debt levels that are going on. A trillion pounds of debt we're in. We're getting over 100% of GDP into debt. And we, and the thing is that we're having to keep getting more and more debt because there's no, there's no end in sight. Do you know what I mean? There's no end in sight. We've been told that we're going to stay in this lockdown until March. That's another month. Another month of this. And it might go on even further than that. It depends what happens. Do you know what I mean? So nobody's going to work, so nothing's getting done, so there's no tax coming in, there's no income coming in, there's just money going out. And the government's decided it's going to take on 80% of people's wages, so they've become the capitalist, they're the ones employing people, capitalists are not employing people, the government is. Where's this money coming from? It's coming from debt, that's where it's coming from, it's by us getting into more and more debt. 
We've already above the level where we'll be able to service this debt. So at some point we're going to default on this and the economy is just going to go crashing. It's going to, it's going to crumble, right? It's, it's totally unsustainable. You can't run an economy like this, man. It's just insanity. It's just insanity. It's just that nobody's got the balls to pull the plug on it right now. Do you know what I mean? Because it will be so devastating if they do. But eventually that's what's going to happen. You can't have this amount of debt. An economy can't service this amount of debt. And you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do about that. And nobody knows what you're going to do. Not a single economist on this planet has got a clue about how we get out of this. Not a clue. Do you know what I mean? I studied it at university. I haven't got a clue. I do not know how you get out of this. Right? It just seems an impossible task. But that's what's going on. The economy is being wrecked. Society is being wrecked. But there's resistance, and there are people doing their own thing, and there are people ignoring the rules, and there are people, you know, doing what they can to make things better for themselves. So, three months into lockdown, we're seeing no improvement in the infection rate, it's not changed, just as many people are getting infected. Just as many people are dying, 100,000 people are dead now. It just doesn't seem that we're able to do anything. It just seems to be getting worse and worse. And there just seems to be no end in sight.